Oh, Kate. How are you today? I've got some mixed emotions. Pastor John is retiring, and I don't like saying goodbye. It's gonna be, it's gonna be weird. I'm not sure, but I, I don't know. I hate words. I don't like to talk about it either. <laughs> <laughs> None of us like goodbyes, do we? I don't think the Apostle Paul liked goodbyes. And in our case, you know, it's. It's it's goodbye for now. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me take this off. It's goodbye bye for now. And I think that's what Paul is saying in Romans 15 and 16. I'll tell you what, why don't we take the book of Romans? We're finishing up over this week and next week. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take the book of Romans and let's use this as a way of talking about some of those farewells that need to be said. No. Actually, I think they're more God bless you. Mm. That are said. Hmm. Yeah. I you know, do you remember what the word goodbye actually means? Oh, the old English God be with ye. God be with ye. <laughs> so as we're saying goodbye, we're not saying, you know, so long forever. We're saying God be with you. We're blessing each other. In fact, I think you've got our word for the day that we're gonna put up there. Which well, was? first we're dealing with fears, okay? Mm. And then what do you think is the opposite? Mm. How do we handle fears, you know, that we see in the community, that we see in each other? Oh, I uh, thought we curse each other. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, or we maybe curse each other. Maybe right? that's a description of what we do, but maybe we're being invited into doing something. Well, different. that's certainly what Paul is doing in chapter 15. It's the same context. He's saying, going to be with you the way you think. Mm -hmm. So let's bless one another. So let's hang it up there, Kate. We're going to take the fears and we're going to do an inverted Bible study, okay? Ooh. We're going we're gonna to turn this around. Instead of just reading chapter 15, we're going to talk about in chapter 15, we need to see what Paul needs to speak to and realizing he's not going to be with them the way they thought. And if we start off with just talking about, um, you know, what are some of the things that hit the community? Um, Micah, do you want to start off with some of the yeah. first things that Paul noticed that they were going to be seeing in each other? Yeah, well, starting out with those, with those fears mm -hmm. of, well, you have your Gentiles and you have your Jews. Mm -hmm. And who, who, is, who is acceptable? Who is welcome? Uh, it's, it's, are they? Are, are we going to insult each other? Like or we, we see too rumors? many. We see too many differences. There's too many opinions about what we need. Us versus them. Them and them is anybody who's different from us <laughs> mm. or from me. You know, mm. and we just have too many things. And when you start to get too many differences. Yeah. Where did you hear about what those people down the street, what those Baptists are doing? Yeah, <laughs> there's rumors, <laughs> and then we start to put down one another. So, so how does Paul respond? And in chapter fifteen, mm -hmm. um, I think let's say which tra we've got a number of translations. Which, Kate, do you want to take? Do you want to take verses four and five? Sure. Maybe, or, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God who gives you endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Keep going. I, well, you want to go back. I was going to say, that's, he's... I like I like what he's saying there because he's he's not saying we're gonna resolve all of our differences, is he? No, he's not. No. But what he says right before that is to put it to put it shortly, when you insult and start rumors about one another, you're insulting Jesus. <laughs> I love the way the message puts it. Each one of us needs to look after the good of the people around us, asking ourselves. How can I help? Mm. That we actually, when we feel that most fear is 
when we st should start looking around and saying, how can I help? Mm -hmm. How can, how can I help? Isolating ourselves. Instead of isolating ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I, I think Paul really says, this is a new, this is what the whole scriptures are about. Mm -hmm. How can we help one another instead of tear? So, you know, maybe the question could be asked, are we supposed to just tolerate one another then? You know, are we supposed to just kind of put up with one another? And, and you know, when we see outsiders and insiders and Jews and Gentiles and us versus them, and that can happen in a small congregation too, you know, what? how does Paul address this? And I'd say verses six and seven. So that with one heart and mouth, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, accepting one another, then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Ooh, I like that passage because it doesn't just say, oh, accept one another, you should just tolerate. Or just tolerate, or just, 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 just avoid each other. Yeah, or, or even just avoid each other. But it was towards a purpose in order for what? Bring praise to God. So in other words, all of our differences should somehow unify to bring praise to God. So it's more than toleration. This is more just like it. Jesus were to welcome and accept and, the other. and accept and realize, oh, man, I think Jesus had a whole group of different disciples, you know, that were not necessarily. And it's not about us. Well, and then mm -hmm, what it's not about us. It is not about us. Okay, it's about it is about somehow how do I see Jesus in all of this? So all of us can understand that. Well, then I think this little congregation in Rome, when they heard that they weren't going to have Paul necessarily come right away to their midst to help fix up all their problems, I think they began to say, we just aren't equipped to handle all this. We just don't feel capable at understanding everything, especially since he just wrote 14 chapters to them, you know, you know to explain everything that was going on. We feel incapable. How will we know what to do if you're not around? Yeah. Hmm. Well. Have you ever felt that way, Kate? <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do when Bash be And I'm busy sitting there writing a book for, uh, this is how I think things are going to go. But you know what? It's not going to have all the answers. Hmm. And you know what I trust? The same thing Paul does. In verses 14 and 15. Michael, do you want to take that one? Yeah. It says, I feel confident about you, my brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to instruct one another. I think I think I should actually say that. All right. I feel confident about what God can do through you and through all the goodness you already have. Mm -hmm. There's enough of the Spirit here that we'll be able to see each other through in this journey. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. He, so talks I about, think that's, he talks about acting boldly. About, about he, he's saying some things boldly, but he's saying you are to do some things boldly as well. Well, why, Kate? Because of the grace God has given us. So God has already equipped the church. He's already equipped people. But I think the problem of the early church and the problem of any congregation is they're going to feel like, I don't think I know exactly how the equipment works. <laughs> Boy, have we learned that. <laughs> how do we learn how the equipment works? Uh, I think there's some fear. fear. There is some fear. How do we learn how the equipment works? We get in there and start using it. And we make some mistakes. And we realize God is with us. And God is with us. You know, it's not just me. You know, it's God. God is with us mm -hmm. to help us be able to use all of this. Maybe that's part of the fears that you that were our, our response to the fears that we have. Mm -hmm. Because Paul's responding to those fears too. They're asking, what do we do? And then they ask in verse 17, they start asking, 
can't you stay with us? Mm -hmm. Or can't you come to us you know, <laughs> and help us with this? And Paul says, no. I, it's time for God's Spirit to use each of us in our ministries in some different ways. And, uh, and for some of us to learn through, you know, we keep addressing problems. Uh, and Paul is trying to address some problems that are happening over in Jerusalem in another area. Mm. And he's realizing God has to use the larger church, including this little Roman congregation, in addressing the problems that are happening in Jerusalem. He now has another ministry, and that's carrying this offering over to Jerusalem mm. to help them with their issues. You know? So the, the focus of the church in Rome then isn't me. me. Isn't me. Isn't just inside me. Paul's it's, encouraging them to focus. Can you focus towards Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. Towards the needs that... Where there's all sorts of poverty. Mm -hmm. Where there is a need for... Which maybe for family of Christ, that would be like saying, can you focus? Can you realize that you're actually going to grow when you reach outside yourselves and you reach outside in some ministry in some way? You know, so I know I know Kate has ambitions towards getting the family of Christ back into reaching out into some of our nursing care facilities, into some rejoicing spirits type ministry, into some ways that reach outside. Um, do you have some others that you want to bring up? Can't think of anything on the top of my head. But that's <laughs> that's enough. I know you've talked about that. Yeah. And um, maybe that's a question for all of us in the midst of our fears mm -hmm. is to go, what? What's God calling us? Mm -hmm. What is God calling us to look outside of ourselves? Paul does that in Romans 16. He says, hey, make sure that you recognize you've got an offering to give mm -hmm. to others. And that's your best way of addressing some of your fears. Mm -hmm. And realizing you've got the gifts. Now so share them. So use them. <laughs> so look beyond the doubts and mm -hmm. fears and use your gifts to, then, to bless. bless others rather than just wait you know, for things to happen. Mm -hmm. Bless others and you will find yourselves blessed in the process mm -hmm. in some way. Um, and uh, Bless to be a blessing. I think we've got enough right there. That's mm -hmm. chapter 15. Chapter 16, we'll start, he starts enumerating what some of their blessings are. But yeah, but we'll, we'll give thanks for that <laughs> next week. Mm -hmm. Right now, I think Paul says, See you later.